lots of info lately. Was buying country increasingly and you can buy a big cartridge or a small cartridge? Or two small cartridges and it's more expensive to buy the larger cartridge. At Staples. At, uh, where was I? I was at Walmart. So I guess at both. Oh, that must be. Yeah. 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 It is. Except, That's true. except the printer that they give you the reservoir is, you know, good for five pages. There's <laughs> definitely a, a strategy they have there. Oh, yeah. Well, my clock says 6.30, so I'll call the meeting to order. Um, I have here except Angela Matthews, who's excused. Joe Gesh, who's excused. Here, who's excused. Otherwise, we only have one vacancy. So otherwise, we're all here. Um, does anybody have a motion to accept the minutes from the last meeting? I believe. Charlie moves that we accept the meeting. And second by Michelle. Any discussion or edits to the minutes from last, last time? Okay. All, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. So the minutes are passed. And we you can move that into a, a final um, folder. Um, yeah, I'll move it. Uh, I had on the on the agenda as the next item to consider applicants for the budget committee vacancy, which is Denise, which is great. But Denise is in another meeting is going to come down a little bit later, so we'll just move on and then when she gets here we can. Or we can just do it right now. She doesn't need any introduction. I mean, she's served on the budget committee longer than most of us here. <laughs> sure. So maybe, uh, so we have one applicant for the one open position. We're going to have a motion to uh, appoint Denise to the budget committee. I'll second. And any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Fantastic. So. And I can swear her in. Right. I'm not sure that we'll be voting on anything else tonight. So, um, um, we do have the next item I had was the um, the draft uh, the draft schedule that was circulated by, and really the key to it is going to be from the school board and from the water group. Um, I don't know if you had a chance to check your mail, but I did send you a, uh, a proposed revised schedule just to you, John. Oh, okay. Um, I was just looking at it with uh, the rest of the select board, and it's probably going to be too tight for us to start that early. So I think we just need to hold it out for a couple of weeks. Um, Analyze anything now. Okay. Um, but if you guys have done the same thing, figured out when you think you'll have your budget ready and the and their and their presentation meeting. You don't have to let me know now, but if you can let, let me know in the next, for the next I can actually let you know that what you proposed is fine. Oh excellent. Except for the snow date on January eighteenth for the public hearing. Um, this, the SAU staff has I wondered if maybe we could do on the nineteenth instead of the eighteenth. Uh, the 19th instead of the 18th of January. I think that was set up a Tuesday. Sounds good. Um, and also some of the dates in September and December um, say 2022. Our SAU staff caught it and said, make sure that they're this year. Yeah. Uh, somebody else, I think, I think uh, Angela picked up on that. And I just sent the draft that I had. I didn't look at it again. It was the last week, so I will correct that. But the, the other dates should be um, 
has proposed. Yeah, I, I did. Business administrator put a nice um, narrative summary of the, the budget now. Um, it's in really good shape. Uh, we were able to um, unencumber the $40,000 that we had budgeted for the Willie Street water project. Um, it turned out that we didn't have to spend any of those funds uh, for that project, which was a really nice uh, surprise. Uh, it was sort of an unknown. 40,000 was a, a hopeful estimate, and so it was great that um, we didn't have to use that. Um, we were able to also unencumber some special items, the actual purchase orders that came in, and we had an emergency dishwasher uh, replacement. Um, but other than that, everything is looking good uh, for the, the Q4 budget, so I guess I I can definitely speak to the, um, just I could answer any questions before that. Um, on, um, and I don't know, maybe I'm missing one, but the SA court, that there was no budget, mm -hmm. what, what was that? For? So, when we split, um, the PR that was this year, it turned out that there were several um, pieces of the accounting software that had to be split because it was no longer under the same SAU 56. And that was a surprise to everyone involved. Um, 
one of the things was the mealtime accounting for the school lunches, um, Blackboard Connect, which is um, you know, the software that does robocalls and automatic emails. And, and there were several software they had to split um, to be SAU 104, which is what our new SAU is. Um, so that was unanticipated spending that had to happen this year. And then just to follow, did you have to purchase software or just the support? Um, there was a little bit of both. I think for most of them, um, it was both because it was kind of the purchase of the software as well as the support for migrating to to suck out our students' data. Um, and we're still in the process of getting that done. It's not completely done. Um, so that's that's shown as a budget, but it was actually by um, some unanticipated revenue, which was the fund balance that we got back um, as a result of the split. And so it wasn't budgeted, um, but it was actually covered by those funds. Thank you. I had a couple of questions from Joe Dash. You couldn't make it. Sure. Here, but uh -huh. One of them um, was, he said there was an available balance of $273,998. And what's the plan for this excess budget? Uh, well, we haven't discussed that as a board yet, but typically um, a sum is returned to uh, at, the, at the end of the, I'm not sure exactly when that happens, but um, when it goes towards setting the tax rate. Uh, so we will discuss that probably at our next meeting and make a vote on you know, to return the full knowledge for I would imagine that a large portion of people go to the top of that tour. Yeah, more of a comment that he had than a question, because it's not something you really do about here, and it's something that has to be done as per negotiation, but he's commenting on the, the, the ratios of salaries to benefits and you know, pointing out that the principal's benefit package is 48 percent of the salary, librarians is 10 percent, private counsel is 71 percent, nurses 41 percent. I think what he's, his point is that, and I, and I think there's a difference probably between private sector and um, finances, but his experience is from private sector and those, those percentages are usually in the 25 percent so they seem inordinately high to him. Uh, not something we can deal with here, but we'd like to see that we work on trying to bring those down. Okay. Um, can you maybe email me some of those? I don't know. It's exactly the same as I had in, in my mind. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't reading. want to say anything because I need to look at it, but. That's um, fine. I'm just reading his email, so uh, I will send that to you. Okay. Anybody else have any specific questions um, on the line items and spending for the school? I'd just like to you know, say that I really appreciate the way they consistently are transparent in their reporting and uh, it makes it much easier to follow and understand that even when there are glitches. Um, so I say you know, it's a job well done. So in terms of the contractual obligations versus discretionary spending, um, I have a printout here, and please excuse the quality, my printer is on the fritz. Um, but I'm hoping that this is information that you are looking for. Um, I'll just pass it on. The bottom, the bottom line is that 
96.79% of the budget is made up of contractual obligations. Um, so when, we, when we're talking about discrete things like um, maintenance and repairs and school supplies and uh, you know, spraying the field for wasps and things like that, um, it's a very, very, very tight budget. Administration do a really good job with, you know, asking really for the bare minimum of, uh, of things to add to what, what is already contracted. So I would, I'll send this around electronically. It looks a, a little bit better, um, but is this kind of the the detail that you were looking for? I think it's, it's what, what Joe was asking about. I think what it. You know, his goal is to try and be more educated about sure. um, how we look at the whole picture, and um, I think this will help. Okay. It seems to be directly what he's asking. So, Great. Um, one can then use this to dig into the, the long uh, yeah. breakdown of budget to sort of see where where there is. Yeah. One one last question in a second email to me uh, was that. Um, do you know how many students are coming in next year with that count is? Um, I don't know. I, I do know. Um, I don't know if it's been talked about publicly. So I won't say the exact number, but um, it's down. Enrollment is down compared to previous years. Um, and sometimes it's hard because we can get a rush of um, students reg registering for kindergarten or for other grades or you know, people coming back into the into the town. But part of it has to do with COVID and kids who are homeschooled or um, maybe gone to uh, private schools where they were doing full in person or where we weren't here. We've definitely seen our enrollment down a little bit. Um, I think we'll have firmer numbers at uh, our August meeting. Hopefully, the world bounces back. That number will kind of normalize throughout the year. That's all the questions that Joe had. <laughs> Any other questions from anybody? Hmm. Okay. Can we move on and put Miles into the spotlight? Sure. I'm going to look at the second quarter. Which it <coughs> So, in general, I think we're in really good shape. Um, we've expended 36% of our um, approved appropriation in the first two quarters. Um, a couple of things that are driving that um, um, is paving, which we just um, did an overlay on Silver Road over the past couple of days. That, um, Contract was for 134,000, so that's that's going to come out of that road maintenance budget. Um, there are a couple other projects that um, our agent has uh, pitched the select board for this year. Um, I doubt I doubt we'll be 55 um, this year, but uh, the other um, major drivers are. Um, We've been understaffed in the police department uh, for most of the year. Um, we did recently extend uh, two offers. We have um, we have one officer starting on August the first. We'll be going to the police academy in August. The other is starting uh, September first. Uh, background check. Um, so those those line items will start to start to fill out, um, but, but being down staff in the police drives um, insurance and retirement as well. So um, those are the highlights um, that, that really, you know, why we're so much under right now. Um, now people had specific questions if they wanted to dive into. I have a question. Um, 
um, on your vehicle maintenance line 134, and then it's also um, 189. Both those lines are um, over a half an inch. Two. Um, so for police. Um, when Gratzkiewicz became chief, it was recommended by our um, consulting company at the time that we offered him a, um, a car as, as, as part of his compensation package. And so it was the cruiser that we would have sold off. We kept it to give to John, and it needed repairs because of um, tires and brakes and things. Um, I think that was the major driver. I'm sure that we had other regular vehicle maintenance, uh, but I know that that was sort of the expense of a couple of thousand dollars to um, also the decals and the lights came off of these electrics cost money too. Um, what was the other one? Um, 189. 189. Yeah. Um, so early in the year, it was discovered that the Volvo backhoe had, so they used that for loading salt um, in the winter, and it had not been, <coughs> I'll say, properly maintained, and the radiator was all rusted out, so we needed to get it fixed. Um, they did a much costlier repair. So there was the, the backhoe, and then also um, the big dump truck needed something um, unexpected. Sorry, I, I don't remember what the something was. Um, the good news is I think on that, um, you know, there, there were always, I, I'm not, not anticipating any other huge line items there. Um, with police, you know, an ongoing
come at this from a budget perspective rather than from, I was on the select board for a little bit. Um, I'm looking at uh, line uh, 95, and I'm wondering if there's any to do any maintenance to the fire station to, because typically you, you know, hit over 5,000 or so in the lot last year. Yeah. Um, so we increased this line specifically for some projects that um, the fire chief had recommended um, around, um, so it's, it's driven by two things largely, um, insulation um, in the fire station, um, we've got a brand spanking new heating system there, so like the building, um, and then also um, one of the warrant articles was to purchase a air pack filling station and that required some additional electric. Um, so that's that's why that line was was bumped up a little bit. Um, and we, we haven't expended very much. So also I, I should say that because the budget passed so late in the year, we did ask department heads to sort of hold off on spending until we had a, a budget passed. So that's I expect we're gonna see an uptick and like now we have a budget and then start spending money. Questions on the expenditures for the town? If we go any faster, then the lease won't get you. One question that uh, Joe had on the revenue, uh, and I it's on the second page, at least of what I have. Uh, under miscellaneous revenue, there's an other category, and there's $125,000 uh, anticipated, and, and he was wondering what that was for. Um, I don't, I don't have an answer for that, but I can find out. Uh, so I think that is, yeah, I'd be, I'd be kind of guessing. I think it's probably hydro, and. Looks like it's been bumped up each year. Just for uh, so maybe like cell phone tower and hydro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can definitely follow up with that. Any other questions on revenue or spending for the town? Balls in your court. How are things looking at Rollinsford Water and Sewer Department? They're looking very well. The Willis Street project, we're still waiting for paving um, costs. We're just waiting for the final number, but we're on track and we're in the end of We're hoping to do some, uh, looks like uh, General's in the maybe give us some work at uh, Polar Dollar. Uh, the budget looks really good.
place in our leads for next year. And I'm finalizing the list of everything that's looking good. Just one question. Uh, Pat, that on guided maintenance of the gas and treatment system was a lot over budget. Yes. Uh, that, what yeah. was that? What, what was the surprise of that? Uh, uh, part of that, I'm sure we got on the distribution system for general for the repair. We caught that also last night because we have a meeting. So that should be on Just an allocation. Allocation, yeah. Uh, okay. Will be corrected. No tragedies, though. No. Nope. Uh, yeah. As you know, General Sullivan, we had to replace the electric motor as well. The electric motor um, was just not meeting our demand when the tank got full. And it was working 10 times harder. And it just couldn't take it anymore. And uh, it was time when we took it out. And then we were seized because it was just one out. You know, running 24 all these years, and then, you know, it's off for five hours. It's not a lot of downfall at all. You know, so we got a brand new pump. The reason why we want to build a new pump is the parts to build the old one out of and the time, which they had one stock with a bigger motor that exceeded our um, our specs and our uh, pressures. So the pump is actually running a lot smoother and uh, electricity cost should be a lot lower because we're pulling more um, through the uh, hooks through that, that VFD trying to be open. So it's, uh, it's nice to have a right size budget going on the pump. And while we're there, we also clean the well, which has been done in quite some time. So that was a perfect time to get everything up to stop and, and do some maintenance. But uh, there is some uh, telemetering. Uh, we want to upgrade there. Uh, we need some, some elevation um, issues and SCADA, all sites that, uh, so we can do it remotely. Like, uh, right now, Porter cannot, yeah, have, something has to be there. I mean, so General has some, some just want to bring those both back up. And, uh, well, Pat, I, I know everything you were talking about. I have to good say. <laughs> <laughs> I like an engineer in the room. <laughs> I'm not sure everybody else knows who the VFD is and all that, but, but uh, yeah, we're just, you know, the old logic model is just, take enlightened stones, think of taking your own vehicle, putting a brick on the gas, and let it run, and let it run for 24 hours and shut off the hours and
water operator, not just continuing along those other two streets. Because the condition was the oldest, where, you know, where I live and Paris is as other people. But it's, um, you know, we have some left hand open valve. We discard those and mark those. And one that's ready to tell you, left to Lucy. And the wife is, um, it's good that we, we found it. That, uh, those things happen. So, uh, any questions for Pat on expenses or uh, revenue or anything like that for the water sewer district? Maybe it's a tiny thing, but how come there's nothing spent for the Wiley Street bond principle? The other bonds are all paid 50%, but nothing for the principal in the Oh, come on, you have to have this memorized line by line. Oh, I'm kidding. I don't know, maybe I made it up. No, I'm still writing 17, 16, and 17. Lily Street? Yeah. Lily and Wiley. Okay. Okay. We just made the principal. Oh, so it's just not happening yet? Just cool. Because we've been paying. We started early to get done. This will be it. So, yes. Can you see? No. <laughs> it's like, sorry. <laughs> you just go on back. Any other questions for our tour district? That's bringing us to the end of what I had. Any other business that anybody would like to, uh, to bring up? Are you going to do anything with that letter from the production? Or is that today? So, uh, all the assets? Can you talk about that? Um, we, we talked about it not at length. At this point, we recognize it's an issue. Um, just like monumental task to go with inventory. Um, so I think what we're going to propose is start with items like five thousand and up, or start somewhere, right? Like we got six fire trucks. We know we have these things, um, but we need to. The problem is, as soon as you do it, 